That's part of the interview, Jane Mayer of The New Yorker, and writing a piece on Christopher Steele. He's like a whistleblower, and he kept saying the Russians are coming and nobody would listen. And she says that he's the, the person close to Steele says he's been shocked at being labeled a criminal, and he's tried to be a loyal ally to the U.S. for 30 years. And people in the intelligence community say that much of the info in the dossier is looking stronger and says Obama and Comey believe that Steele and his sources were reliable and his findings were consistent. Well, obviously, she has now taken a batch of, of poisoned you know, drink and swallowed all of it. Uh, Greg Jarrett and Sarah Carter are with us. Greg Jarrett, Fox News legal analyst, Sarah Carter, investigative reporter. Uh, Greg, how many times have you read this dossier? <laughs> it never gets old. About a hundred times, and I still laugh. Why do you laugh every time you read it? it? It's written by a really bad novelist, uh, you know, who is trying to conjure up a story out of thin air that, frankly, makes no sense. It's poorly written. It just doesn't pass the laugh test. And it's based on, you know, double, triple, and quadruple hearsay, none of which is even capable of being verified. And look, it is a myth that Christopher Steele is some sort of a reliable patriot. He's, he's British, of course, but holds some dear allegiance to the United States. It's not true. This is a guy who's trained in deception and lying. He has sources, allegedly, who are infamous for disinformation. Uh, the Russians, and just, you know, read... The ICA, uh, the report by the DNI about how they're just notorious for infusing the West with all kinds of lies, and that's what they did in this case. I don't know if Steele was in on it and just made stuff up, or whether he was fed a lot of malarkey by people in Moscow, but he hated Trump, and so did uh, Glenn Simpson of Fusion GPS, and the two of them decided, let's run with this thing and ruin Trump. It's really quite Isn't, isn't that at the story. end of the day, it defies any, sen any common sense whatsoever, Sarah, and that the only reason that they wanted to believe this is because it was anti-Trump. And if it meant they're going to tell this, this outrageous story about hookers in the Ritz in Moscow urinating on Donald Trump's bed... <laughs> And even though it's quadruple hearsay to get there, and likely a Russian government source that is paid, uh, it doesn't matter because it gets to the the goal of creating a false narrative. It's it's like former. It really is a book right out of you know Russian propaganda, misinformation, and lies to their own people. Uh, yeah, and it's a it's a book, Sean, that the Russians have written over and over again since even before the wall came down. You know, before the Iron Curtain uh, came down, that the KGB was they were experts at. I mean, this is something they're well trained in. You know, it wasn't as if it would be different if Christopher Steele was working, for example, on a completely different case, and he had flipped. Based on, you know, he's a former intelligence officer. He had accidentally flipped some Russian who had some information that said, hey, look, I have some documents I need to show you. Uh, I want to expose it because I think there's some really sorted issues here, some corruption issues. Here's some evidence. No, Christopher Steele was paid basically by the DNC and the Hillary Clinton campaign to go out and dig up dirt on President Trump through Fusion DPS. And then he goes to his old cohorts, people who are also trained in deception, and reaches out to them looking for information on President Trump. The very minute he opened his mouth and spoke to those Russian ex-spies, current spies with the FSB, they immediately went into gear and they figured out who was paying him. There is no doubt in my mind, based on the people I've spoken with, that they knew right away that Christopher Steele, that this was an opposition type of investigation into President Trump and it fit right in with their plans, which is to sow chaos in the United States. And they fed him a bunch of disinformation. He didn't care because, as Greg said, and as we know now, based on actual facts, 
He opposed Trump from the beginning. He would do anything to see that Trump was not elected. So from the very beginning, this was a failed intelligence operation by an ex-British spy, a foreign agent of another country, using an, basically a But Cold fundamentally, War the question is this. How is it, because you, you can't write a spy novel like this, how is it Hillary has the FBI, Department of Justice, cover for her when we know she violated laws with the email server, with classified, top secret, special access program, you know, buried in a closet in a mom and pop shop, uh, deleting subpoenaed emails, 33,000, acid washing the hard drive, you know, banging up and beating up devices. Uh, she gets exonerated without an investigation. And then Hillary Clinton gets to fix a primary. And then Hillary Clinton, you know, gets to it literally purchases Russian lies, and we know it came from her, uh, to manipulate the minds of the American people. And then all her deep state friends get together and they go to the FISA court, they put in an application, the bulk of information is the bought and paid for lies, they don't tell the court the truth, they bury where the information came from, who paid for it, they put a footnote that is meaningless rather than telling the truth, and she seems to, up to this point, the focus in this country still remains Trump, Russia, Trump, Russia, and meanwhile we have all the evidence that I think would put everybody else in, in this country in jail but her. How she got away with it because Democrats were in power for eight years, and the Obama administration dominated the FBI and the Department of Justice, and they protected her. They wanted uh, to continue their own power, uh, and so the only way they could do that was to perpetuate another Democrat in the White House, and that was Hillary Clinton. They were banking on it. We get to keep our jobs. We, kept our, we keep our hold on power. If Hillary Clinton is president, so we're not going to indict her. We're not even going to convene a grand jury. We're going to cover up her crimes and protect her. That's how she got away with it. Sir? She got away with it because she was in, basically, if you look at the facts, the collusion was between Hillary Clinton and senior level Obama officials. And they were in collusion together. And then you look at the facts and you see that the real collusion was the Russia collusion with this dossier and Fusion GPS and Hillary Clinton and spreading disinformation. And then you go one step further and you say, well, the media fed into that. A lot of people in the United States media as well as lawmakers, fed in and bought into this dossier and helped spread unsubstantiated false rumors. Okay, then why are we where we are today, where Robert Mueller now gets to appoint a team of only Democratic donors to Obama, Clinton, and others? He has a, a team of Trump haters and Clinton lovers on the team. We have all of this evidence. You never hear about anything happening with Hillary except but through your investigation and analysis and my investigations and analysis, nobody else in the media is touching it. And yet, and, you know, if Sam Nunberg is having a, a meltdown on national TV, that's what they're going to talk about because he's anti-Trump. You know, it seems that we're in an environment where, where up is down, down is up, black is white, white is black, and the truth is a lie and the lie is truth. And I just don't know, you know, country seems to be spinning out of control based on a lie and, and truth falls by the wayside as the casualty in all this. And meanwhile, Mueller's mandate, you know, expands every single day. Now he's looking into financing and of potential from the uh, United Arab Emirates. And, you know, he's expanding out as far as he possibly can go, considering there's no collusion he can prove. Well, because the collection of Trump haters knows no end. And Robert Mueller has been a longtime uh, friend, ally, and partner with James Comey. He was fired by President Trump, justifiably, for breaking the law. Uh, and so Mueller has an agenda. He has motivation. Uh, it's called retribution. And you just look at his team of partisans, and you know what's going on here. And So uh, we have you know, now criminalized political differences where the guilty go free and the innocent you know, get investigations that never end. Well, it appears that way, and it appears, if you want to go back to your original question, Sean, how did we get here? Well, look, it was former FBI Director Comey who decided not to move forward with the Hillary Clinton investigation into her email server. He shut that down. 
And then it was FBI direct former. Did he, FBI did he shut it Comey. down or did he rig it? Rig the outcome and not and not well, have any fidelity to the decision. law. It wasn't even his decision to make. It should have gone to Loretta Lynch. the Department of Justice. But he shut it down. And Is, then he opens up. He basically said he leaked his memos, some of which were classified, in order to open a special counsel investigation into the president. All right, and we'll that's take a break. Where it began. Sarah Carter, Greg Jarrett are with us. All right, as we continue, Greg Jarrett and Sarah Carter with us. You know, bringing up all of the issues, is there ever going to be justice as it relates to the fix being in, the laws Hillary broke on the email server scandal? Will there be justice on the corrupt Uranium One deal? Will there be justice uh, against those people that willingly lied to a FISA court judge, Greg Jarrett? Not unless there's a second special counsel, because the inspector general at the Department of Justice is toothless, has no power. He can make some findings, but he, he can probably only get his hands on about 10% of the wrongdoing. That's about it. Uh, so if there's a second special counsel uh, who takes his duties seriously, objectively, and does it in a neutral fashion, absolutely. So then what does this say about Jeff Sessions? Where is the attorney general of the United States? He's not the attorney general. He, he, you know, that's his title, but he's not. He is, he is left out of all decisions. He is kept out of meetings. He doesn't have a clue as to what's going on, and he thinks everything's hunky-dory. Does he not watch? Does he not read? Does he not aware of what, what, what is going on here and how dangerous this is for the rule of law, equal application of the law, Sarah? I think he's very well aware of that. I don't think that the Attorney General is completely blinded to what's happening here. What's going on inside the Department of Justice is a mystery to a lot of people. And I've spoken to senators and congressional members who are saying, look, I don't know which direction uh, Attorney General Jeff Sessions is going to take. But now there's a lot more people pushing for a special counsel. Now, the DOJ and Attorney General Sessions says, please, let's stop this madness of you know special counsel. Let's let Horowitz do his job. But if you talk to others, they say, you know, my yeah, he has no prosecutorial powers, none, zero. He Zip. doesn't have, and he doesn't have the resources that would require that he would need in order to do this extensive investigation. But Sean, look, I think that people will be brought to justice. There's ongoing investigations right now, even within the Department of Justice. There are federal prosecutors looking into a lot of these issues besides, you know, Inspector General Michael Horowitz. So there will be evidence coming out. And remember, Horowitz's report is due very soon, probably within the next few weeks. And when that report comes out, he can refer for criminal prosecution. Is it going to be in March, or are they going to push it, what is it, 14 months? When do we finally get it? I think it'll be this March. I think it'll be this month. Um, the latest would be probably the first week of April. That's what I've been told. Uh, but March was their target date. So I think they're going to try to get it out by the target date. And one final thought here, because I think this is really important. If he does make a criminal referral, then we're going to see what action the Department of Justice takes under Attorney General Jeff Sessions. If he recuses himself from that, if nothing moves forward, then I think we need to be really worried. Uh, but if they decide to move forward with some type of prosecution of, of any of these players, then we may be, be able to say, okay, then maybe they are going to do their job. But right now, we just don't know. All right. Thank you both. 